Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm riding this. This is the Ducati Super Sport 950S. This is the updated model. I've done a vlog on the older one which was red color. This is finished in white. Looks absolutely phenomenal. The front is actually inspired by the Panigale V2 with this beautiful looking DRL. It says Ducati here. Dual projector setup and it says Ducati here. This is manually adjustable so you can just pull it out like that. Yeah, the windscreen visor is manually adjustable. Indicator placement on the outside rear view mirror. Right now I've turned on the hazard lights of course. It looks absolutely stunning and sexy from the side just look at it what a beautiful looking machine in fact it gets dual 320 mm discs at the front brembo brake calipers 43 mm upside down forks reflector treatment here everything on this bike is just super sexy red finishing here on the super sport which is like a sticker front tire size 120 70 17s then when you come to the fairing you realize that it has become slimmer now when compared to before and they have made some cuts and creases for better breathing the earlier bike used to heat a lot this also heats but lesser red colored frame because this is actually the fared version of the Ducati Monster. There is the L-Twin engine. You get this dual barrel exhaust. And of course, peg quality is also phenomenal. You get this yellow colored monoshock suspension. O-Lens, you have to manually adjust them, of course. Rear tire size is obviously bigger because it is a 180-55-17 Y-shaped alloy wheels. Three spoke and single sided swing arm looks phenomenal, looks really nice. Dual barrel exhaust, indicator functioning. I think everything on this bike is LED, of course. Look at the size of the rear tire. It is massive. That is the brake light. The seat is quite comfortable, actually. It says Ducati here, but the pillion does not get any grab rail. So a bit of a problem for the pillion, but the seat is comfortable. The tank is also nicely done. In fact, I really like the red and white finishing because it kind of contrasts in that regard. It says Ducati here. Look at the exhaust under part, of course. You have to manage adjust this and you can also adjust the front suspension for both preload and compression you have to manually do that as well this is where the key actually goes in master cylinder this is for the hydraulic clutch clutch is in heavy which is quite surprising this is to turn on the bike this is for changing whether you want the DRL or the headlight this is for the hazard light of course says Ducati on the hand grip adjustable levers both the levers are actually adjustable this is for the pass by this is for low beam and high beam and this buttons are to browse through that screen that's a 5 inch TFT screen I believe or probably looks smaller as well on oh my god that's really very loud mirrors are positioned far ahead so we'll have to see whether they are useful or not looking at the cluster well some things have gone missed right now says Ducati when you turn on the bike and everything lights up one by one there was a fuel meter here earlier which has gone so it has a distance to empty right now tachometer tells you the various settings for the various electronics on this motorcycle and then to browse through you can just yeah lap timer setting menu if I keep this pressed down it will come to the lower part wherein I've got twin trip meters as well as it tells me what is the average speed as well as the average consumption right now it's 35 degrees because it's the evening otherwise it's super hot we're going to go up and then we are going to get into the settings menu here you have got a lot of things like riding mode fuel indicator drl pack light pin code date and time service lap timer tire calibration turn indicators and measurement units something you really don't want to bother about so we're just going to get out of this menu press this button there we are out if i keep this pressed there i get into the riding mode so i can obviously alter a few things about the riding mode but i want to show you something really interesting okay i get into the settings menu i get into the riding mode i want to configure it there it lets me configure stuff with really nice graphics can you see that the bike is seen there so it takes some time to get used to this clunky system of browsing through multiple things but it is actually not that difficult after riding the super sport rather this is the super sport after riding the street fighter i am like yeah this system is a bit confusing anyways let's turn on the motorcycle there sounds like a tractor let's rev this what are you talking is there a soft limiter yeah soft limiter at 3000 rpm 
Are you crazy, Ducati? How can you do that to a motorcycle? That's not cool at all. Anyways, ideal is not that smooth, but in terms of riding, it is way better. So let's start riding right away. All right, let's turn on the motorcycle and into first gear, and off we go. The smile on the kid's face is just something only a motorcycle can do to you. Oh my God, I can't believe the bike is so easy to ride. It looks sporty, but it is not. It's quite usable. It has a characteristic of say a CBR 250R. So sort of a sports tourer in that regard. So they should not call it super sport. They should call it super sport tourer. Mm, <laughs> nice, yeah. The bike is actually quite easy to ride, which is nice. Riding posture is a bit aggressive. A bit, I would say. Not very much. A little bit sporty riding posture. But very much manageable now i'm riding in urban mode which is the lower mode there are three riding modes basically the riding modes change a lot of things like the ducati quick shifter is always on in all the riding modes traction control has eight settings they vary between the riding modes along with that obviously the wheelie control also varies in the various riding modes so basically it has four levels of wheelie control three levels for abs it has got bosch's six axis imu initial measurement unit which basically judges the yaw the roll and pitch and everything and makes changes accordingly especially for the cornering abs and depending on the mode the engine is either low mid or high so in urban mode the engine is low in the sport mode the engine is high of course in touring mode the engine is mid weight balance is actually nice this bike weighs around i think 210 kgs seat height is 810 mm which is good for someone as tall as me yet it will be good enough for most riders who are on the taller side short riders will find it really difficult but i think they'll get used to it ground clearance is low at 135 mm you want to make a nice quick overtake no problem at all what is this guy doing dude there's so much space but this guy wants to just jump on the left but then people who drive chinese cars can do anything so you have to be a bit cautious in that regard no sort of adas is going to help you mr aster if you don't <laughs> use common sense while driving your car anyways speed breaker has come from nowhere now power delivery is very smooth and humble in this mode which we are riding in right now but i keep this button pressed here and we are actually going to browse through the riding modes and get into sport mode so as long as i close the throttle the mode change can happen otherwise it will not happen very important to close the throttle of course and it's time to launch oh my god i can feel the immediate change in the nature of the engine as soon as i get into sport mode so yeah it makes a big difference ah, i found neutral without much fuss we're going to stop you're going to adjust the mirrors adjusting the mirrors is easy from inside i just have to press it like this i'm waiting for that time when the oh, left one is easier when there'll be a button here to adjust the mirrors like in cars of course the mirrors don't offer a best view because a great view i would say because i can see my arms here anyways it's time to launch into first gear there's no launch control none of that it's not needed as such okay we are going to rev it now it revs when it's in gear so there you see it revs and off we go First gear 99 kilometers per hour quick shifter working fantastically well second gear 137 yeah performance is good it's not scary the initial punch is not that great so yeah low end is not good under rather below 3000 rpm it doesn't pull very strongly you have to pull it above 3000 rpm because the mid-range is really fantastic on this motorcycle it pulls nice and strong in the mid-range but in the top end now nah, it has quite a lot of vibes yeah there are a lot of vibes and vibrations which you can feel in fact the mirrors also vibrate quite a lot because they're mounted now nah, on the body directly and not on the handlebar so not the smoothest in terms of the way the engine performs this is an l twin of course it's known as a test strata which is i think a narrow engine head whatever i don't even really understand how ducati makes things so confusing and difficult for people who don't speak italian it's producing 110 horsepower and 93 newton meters of torque 0 to 100 kilometers per hour comes up in three and a half seconds which is decently quick there's good amount of grip from the tires this bike is not about handling yeah? it is a little sober when it comes to pushing it around the corner but this is a mild muncher it feels a little rough more so in the top end of the rev range but the gearbox is slick shifting and the clutch is actually quite light which is surprising a ducati bike with a light clutch i wasn't expecting that but i have to give it to ducati for making bikes which are so damn sexy this is like a beautiful looking motorcycle really beautiful here see filtering through traffic no problem at all i didn't even have to put my foot down that is how light this bike feels doesn't feel heavy at all you have to come to the front to do a nice launch will we manage that oh see as rs i'm so 
<laughs> wowed by a CIS RS without alloy wheels and off we go quick shifter working beautifully well yo lot of wind blast even if I have this visor all the way on the top which is not going to move while riding I will still have a big fat issue with wind blast because of my height probably feels quite stable in fact top speed is around 245 kilometers per hour I have heard I don't know I've not done it <clears throat> let's go yeah throttle response is really very nice and crisp but the problem is the pricing of this motorcycle five years back I rode the red one which is the non-updated rather the pre-updated model which actually was 5 lakhs cheaper so in 5 years they have increased the prices by 5 lakhs which means 1 lakh every year hmm, that's interesting I think buying a motorcycle is an investment of sorts these days because prices keep rising all the time the price of this bike is 21.45 lakhs get the non-S version which is priced at around 18.4 lakhs so 3.05 lakhs cheaper with the S you get Olin suspension this beautiful white shade and I think that's about it worth it I believe for the better handling the better suspension of course ride is quite compliant this is a very beautiful looking motorcycle which is actually very usable as well that's not something you say about ducatis every day but then this is the fed version of the monster and obviously the monster being a street motorcycle a street fighter motorcycle a naked motorcycle is very easy to ride in that regard just the engine feels a bit rough and heating is better contained now earlier it used to heat a lot the super sport but now it doesn't when i rode this bike five years back i fell in love with it i really loved the bike for how easy it was to use how it had so much performance and how beautiful it looks and i think the formula hasn't changed only thing is the formula has become much more expensive now brakes are nice and very good in terms of stopping power of course but then this is a ducati so good brakes are a given grip is a given a lot of these things are actually a given because this is a ducati you guessed it right we are actually going to stop on the side let me turn on the hazard lights that's a good thing such bikes come with a hazard light only thing is soft limiter has come now with this bs6 update it's not bs6 i don't know i don't care i just feel sad for the soft limiter shouldn't be here for sure at idle it has this roughness to it hazard lights off into first gear and off we go oh my god it has this tendency to wheelie because of so much thrust going to the rear wheel so yeah you have to be a bit careful with putting all that power down obviously it has got four levels of wheelie control which has your back for the most part but then you also have to be a little sane in putting all that power down I think for this price, there are better alternatives. This is an expensive motorcycle. It's very desirable, but extremely expensive. And if you have not noticed it by now, shift light has been placed here. So it tells you when to shift up. Red line comes in at around 10,000 RPM, slightly more than that. The tank is a bit narrow because of which you're not able to hold it with that much confidence. And I think fuel efficiency would be somewhere between 14 to 15 kilometers per liter. Again, largely dependent on your riding style, but this is a bike you can actually ride it very sanely. You don't have to push it hard and really go bonkers with it because of the way the mirrors have been positioned you have to be a bit careful while filtering through traffic yeah that's something you have to factor in so we are going to come to first gear i think that would be the better gear and okay time to launch from here i know this grand Titan guy will disappear way before the signal goes green and off we go let's go Quick shifter is such a breeze now. It's fantastic the way the quick shifter works. So guys, this is my vlog of the Ducati Super Sport 950S. Beautiful looking motorcycle, but yeah, expensive, making it even more apt to say that good things come at a price. They don't come cheap. If you like this vlog, make sure to give the thumbs up. That's a like button. And also subscribe to the channel. This bike needs to be a little smoother in the way it sounds. It sounds too rough. Yeah, it's just too rough somehow which isn't something you would expect of a Ducati motorcycle. I think we should launch it once again, which means it's time to take a U-turn. Yeah, you have to actually play with the clutch because low end is so bad now that every time I'm trying to <laughs> manage how it is performing in terms of low end speeds. So in the city, you're not really going to enjoy this motorcycle. Out on the highway, you can do this, which is very much enjoyable without a doubt. This is going to come to a halt here and just launch it one last time oh my god these rumblers aren't felt as badly as i thought they would be and it's time to launch into first we are already into first and off we go bye bye <laughs> 